What's up guys, it's Rowan here from Art of Smart TV. 50%, that's what your HSC exams are worth. And regardless of maybe how well or how poorly you went in your internal HSC uh, trials and internal assessments, the reality is you've got 50% and it's right around the corner. So what do you do? What do you do in the lead up to your HSC exams? In this video, what I'm gonna be sharing with you is exactly step by step what you need to do in the 30 days before your HSC exam to make sure that you are prepped and ready for it. We're gonna cover some cool stuff. We're gonna look at the KSS protocol. We're gonna look at wall charting, feedback loops, and more. Let's dive in and find out what you've gotta do in the next 30 days to nail your HSC exams. So step number one, you've got to conduct a post-trials post-mortem. That's right. Ultimately, if you're going to change your results from trials to your HSC, you have to change what you're doing. Because if you don't change, you're going to get the same results in your HSC as your trials. And we want to avoid that at all costs. But to actually change what you're doing, that involves changing some habits. And that's not an easy task just to, to just do. We need to be super intentional about it. And that's why we have something we call the KSS protocol. Fancy name for a simple thing. What I want you to do is to sit down and write down now the worst subject you did during your trials. Just write it down. In fact, pause the video, get the paper out now and write down maths, English, chemistry, whatever the subject was, write it down. Good, you got it? You got the subject down? Awesome. What I want you to now do is I want you to ask yourself, you know, what did you do well in the lead up to that exam? You know, like what, what, was, what were you doing? What was your study that you think actually was pretty good? And for that study, what you're gonna do is you're gonna keep on doing that. That's the K. You're gonna identify the K in what you need to keep to do for your HSC exams. Because you don't wanna throw everything out. There's gonna be some stuff that is good. The next question I want you to ask is, well, you know, what are some things that you did that just didn't work? Right, maybe you were studying late the night before and cramming, maybe you freaked out in the exam. What are the things that did not work? And that's gonna be S for stop. You're gonna stop doing these for the next time around in your HSC exams. Really, really simple. But again, if you don't write these down, you're not gonna rewire the habit. The act of writing this down is really, really important to start getting you to rewire your habit for your HSC. Now the final thing I want you to reflect on is, well, what could you do differently? What will you need to change now in your approach for the HSC exams? And that's what you're gonna start doing. So that's the final S in KSS, start. So what are you gonna start doing? And again, write this down. If you're not intentional about it and you just think it's gonna happen, I promise you in the overwhelm and the stress of the HSC, it won't actually happen and convert to action. So KSS, keep, what are you gonna keep on doing? Start, what are you gonna start doing? And S, stop, what are you gonna stop doing? Let's write this down for your worst subject and then go and do it with all your other subjects. That's step number one. Now let's jump in to step number two. So the second thing that you need to do is to actually use the feedback that you've been given in your trials. Now, most of the time what happens is you get your exam paper back from your trials, you sit there in class, your teacher does like an exam review, and you go through it and you're like, oh, that's why I got that wrong, oh, that's why I got that wrong, right? Which is great, you need to do that. But honestly, is that gonna change your behavior the next time you get a similar question? Honestly, no, right? I mean, think of it, if you were a basketball player, for example, and you, know, you missed a shot in, in the game, would someone telling you that, you know, uh, your coach telling you, well, this is the reason why you missed the shot. You know, your feet were in the wrong place, your hands were in the wrong place, uh, you, as a result, didn't get the trajectory of the ball right. No, it won't. Sure, it's helpful knowledge to have, but in the moment, the next game, you're not going to correct that unless you actually go and do some reps and you practice shooting the basketball with the correct uh, form. Same thing applies here. With your trials, what you critically, critically need to do is actually to go back over the mistakes that you made and retake them. Like do every single one from scratch, get them right because you've got to rebuild the habit. Super simple, but incredibly powerful. So step number three, you want to identify your weak areas and focus on these. Ultimately, you know, in the gap between trials and your HSC, you know, the goal is about going back and fixing all the stuff that you got wrong in your trials. You know, in theory, if you were to not make the same mistakes that you made in trials, 
you're going to do a lot better in your actual HSC exams. And so as a result, we need to actually focus on these weak areas. But being really honest, most of the time we tend to avoid the weak areas because, well, it's hard, right? Like it's painful for us to do it. Uh, so we, you know, we, we pick the easier stuff first. So really critically though, if you've only got, you know, a month to prep for these HSC exams, you've got to focus on the stuff that's going to move the needle in the biggest way. And this is your weak areas. So how do you do this? Well, really simply go back over your trials, go back over the feedback that you receive from your teachers. Go and identify where did you make mistakes? You know, which topics was it on? Maybe what style of question was it for? Uh, because maybe you know, your short answers you just bombed at and you haven't yet developed the skill for short answers or maybe your multi-choice strategy and your approach sucked. So it's not just a content side of things, it's also a question type. You wanna identify your weak areas and write a list write a list for each subject of, okay, here are my weak areas, here are the things that I didn't do well at, I made mistakes on in the trial, that I'm going to need to work on in the next 30 days. We need a clear hit list, because that's gonna lead on to our next step, where we're gonna do something with this hit list of weak areas, so that you can actually focus in your study. So step number four in preparing for your HSC exams is to create something that we call a wall chart. Now a wall chart honestly is a, a fancy name for something really simple. What I want you to do is get out a piece of paper and I want you to write three columns in it, right? or three lines I should say, that'll create four columns. And those four columns represent each a week. Week one, two, three, and four. Because we've got four weeks, 30 days, until your HSC exams. Now at the top of that page, I want you to write the subject that you were doing the planning for. So, you know, use that worst subject that you wrote down, wrote down earlier on when you did your post-mortem on your trials. Write that subject down, so English, chemistry, maths, whatever it is. And what I want you to do now is I want you to think about, okay, you know, if my goal is to get a band six, to get 80%, to pass, whatever it might be in my HSC exams, what do I need to do each week between now and the start of the HSC exams, so in 30 days, so that I would actually give myself the best chance of getting that goal mark in the exams. So pretty much all we're doing here is something really simple. We're creating a to-do list that's broken up into time. So it's everything that you need to do to nail this subject in the HSC exams planned for when you're gonna get it done as milestones. Am I gonna get it done this week, next week, the week after, etc. So you know, as an example, maybe the first week you've got get my notes into order. You know, they weren't up to scratch, there's some weak areas. So perhaps in week one, you're working on and nailing your notes to make sure that they're all done and dusted. Perhaps in week two, you're gonna start doing past papers and some practice essays, um, and you're gonna get feedback on it. Perhaps in week three, you're gonna be using the feedback that you got and the mistakes you made in the past paper week to double down and to do extra work and extra practice questions. And then in the final week, perhaps what you might be doing is doing like an overview of all the content, right? It's so the week before, rewriting out all the key ideas and potentially diving in and doing further practice exam papers under timed conditions. So that's an example. Now, of course, you want to be specific. The more specific you can be here, the more effective this wall chart's going to be. So don't say, oh, I'll work on a practice paper. It's like complete one or two or five practice papers. You know, I'm going to complete my study notes on what topic, right? I'm going to write out my study notes. Okay, great. Like, what topics will you write out? So be precise, because that way, when you cross it off, you can honestly say, yes, I've achieved that thing. Now the reason it's called a wall chart is nice and simple. You're gonna pop it up on a wall. Every time you get something done for that subject in that week, you're gonna put a big fat line through it. So what that's gonna give you, it's gonna give you a visual progress bar as to how you were going for your HSC trials. Or sorry, I should say for your HSC exams. So you're gonna look at it at any point and go, oh cool, I'm, I'm a little behind this week, I need to get cracking. Or awesome, I've actually done the work I'm on track. So it's a really powerful yet super simple way for you to plan when you're going to get stuff done because I promise you failing to plan is planning to fail. If you don't have a plan of when you're going to get stuff done you will get overwhelmed and you will end up you know getting stressed and not getting the work done that you need. So step number five, I want you to pretend that you're still at school. Honestly, what's gonna happen as soon as school officially ends and you've got this sort of month to go before your HSC exams, there's one thing that you're going to want to do, and that is to sleep in. 
right? It's holidays, sort of. And so our tendency is just to sleep in, but often what will happen is you'll sleep in, and maybe by the time you start studying, it's like 10, it's 11, maybe it's after lunch. And the problem then is that by the time you get work done, it's moving later and later into the evening. And then what happens is you go to sleep later because you, know, you want some chill time, you want to relax, hang out with friends, watch a movie, and then what happens the next day? You sleep in even more. It's a nasty cycle. It's also changing the habits and the routines that you've had over the last six or seven years as part of school. So the simplest thing that you can do in the 30 days leading up to your HSC exams is to pretend you're still at school. Wake up and start studying when school would start. So when that first bell would ring to, for period one, that's when you're gonna start studying. You know, when the recess bell rings, that's when you take a recess break. When the lunch bell would ring, that's when you take a lunch break. The great news about this is that what happens when, you know, 3.10, 3.06, 2.30, whatever time school typically ends, guess what you get to do after that? Chill out. And so it means that you've done six hours every day of solid study, which is awesome, but you're also then getting some time to relax, have fun, enjoy yourself, which is gonna be so important because 30 days of, of study, and then you've got a three week at least exam block. To maintain the energy levels throughout that entire period, you need to have some fun. And that's what each night is gonna enable you to do. You're gonna have time to hang out with friends, go out um, and just relax. Now you might still be sitting there thinking, well, six hours is not enough, I'm really stuffed, I did really poorly in my trials. Well, even if you study until 5 p.m., that'll give you roughly eight hours of study per day. And honestly, if you're working hard doing proper study, you, your brain will be dead. You're not gonna be able to do more than eight hours. If you're telling people, I'm doing 12 hours, uh, really, it means that there's something wrong with the quality of your study. Eight hours of hard work, your brain should be fried, and that's plenty of time still at 5 p.m. to check off, chill out, relax, and stay healthy over the course of the journey. So there you have it, guys. That are the five critical, five critical steps that you need to really nail over the 30 days prior to your HSC to really help you uh, maximize your results in that HSC so that you've got the most options for further study uh, at university or otherwise when you graduate. If you have any questions about what to do in the lead up to your HSC exams, leave a comment below. Uh, myself or the incredible team of tutors and mentors at Art of Smart uh, would love to help, so leave a comment and one of our team will get back to you. Of course, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. We're doing videos every single week, particularly in the lead up to your HSC exams. So if you do decide to procrastinate on YouTube, at least you can persuade yourself that you are procrastinating productively. I will see you next week.